Hi, this is Amber with Story Chasing, and since this is my sixth year of RVing and being in van life, I thought I'd address this very popular question that I get, which is, if I had to start van life all over again, what would I do differently? So this is what I would do. And by the way, I'm kind of outside by a lake in the Dallas area. Of course, I came to this location early this morning to get a prime spot so it's nice and quiet so I can film, and guess what? <laughs> They're over there doing construction. This always happens to me in van life. So if you can hear that, I apologize. I have a little road mic on that's kind of hidden under my clothes right now. So hopefully that will cut out any noise. The number one thing that I would do differently is I would build out my own van rather than getting the van that I have now, which is a Heimer Active. Now, if you've been on my channel long enough, you know that Heimer went out of business. They were only in business for a couple of years in North America. So I lost my warranty. We all lost our warranty warranty and they did some stuff in the van that meh, I probably wouldn't have done. It's maybe a little over complicated for a system that doesn't always work properly. Now, I was really lucky. My van has done very, very well, except for some minor issues with the power, which I've gotten sorted out, but it was kind of costly to get those things sorted out. So part of the reason why I would build up my own van is because I would want the entire van to be exactly what I want, especially what I know now. And I'm gonna go through those things in just a minute. But part of it is because I would like to keep things in the van simple. So for instance, the power systems, the plumbing system. I wouldn't even have plumbing. I would have a very simple system where you would have the water cans underneath the sink and a pump that pumps the water from that. And you can just go fill those cans very, very easily. Now there's of course some trade-offs with that. If I did that type of a system with the water, then I wouldn't have the 23 gallons that I have in the van, but I would be able to fill it up a little bit easier. So there's a little bit of trade-offs. The number one thing is building out my own van. Another reason why I would do it is because I would want to know exactly how it was put together so I could fix it and fix it most likely by myself or have someone else who could work on it that's just maybe someone who fixes homes rather than making it complicated where if it's an electrical system I'm gonna have to knock something out of the wall or take something apart to fix some wiring in the van because it's such a tight space they have shoved every single electrical component every water pump every pipe into very tiny tiny spaces therefore it makes it a little bit more difficult to work on. I would also want to make this a very open concept. So right now I have the walls in the van for the bathrooms. There's the bathroom that separates the living room, which is the bench and the front seats. And then it also separates the bedroom. I would just take out the bathroom altogether. I don't use it except for the toilet. Now, I, right now I use the shelving and stuff in there because it's there, but otherwise I've removed the sink from the bathroom because it was just this fold down sink, really not needed. I just use the kitchen sink. I mean, it's a van, why do I need two sinks? So I would take that entire bathroom out, put cabinets up above, put cabinets down below, take a composting toilet and stick it underneath that bench seat, make it a more simple system. That's the other thing is the composting toilet. I have a cassette toilet in here right now. It has given me problems from day one. I feel like it's just, it, it just doesn't work properly. And how they put it in there where the toilet seat is connected to the shower pan, like it's just a hot mess. It's, it's not simple to even remove. Like I wanna get a composting toilet right now, but I have to redo the bathroom at this point because of that. They just made things more complicated than they really should be. Super quickly, I wanna thank Surfshark for sponsoring this video today. So if you're unfamiliar with Surfshark, Surfshark VPN is a virtual private network extension and app that allows me to change my IP location to unblock content and basically cover up anything that I do online. For example, I go into stores and coffee shops. Sometimes I'm just not getting a very good sell signal. If I need to look up something online, which happens if I'm in a store, I'm trying to price shop a little bit, or if I'm lounging in a coffee shop and I need to have access to the internet, typically these stores and coffee shops will have a public Wi-Fi network. The problem with getting on some of these public Wi-Fi's is that it opens you up to data breaches. People can access your passwords. They can access your private information. So the only thing I have to do is open up Surfshark, 
flip on the VPN for whatever country that I want. Everything I do online is now encrypted, private, and secure, and I'm not hacked. Also, I use Surfshark VPN to access otherwise blocked content, like watching my favorite shows when I'm traveling to other countries. Hopefully you see why I love Surfshark VPN so much, and I highly recommend it. And if you sign up using my code STORYCHASING, you'll get 85% off plus three extra months for free. Huge points to Surfshark for providing a 30 day money back guarantee. So click the link below to get signed up today. The other idea behind the open concept is that it is a small space. Adding all of these walls just makes everything feel smaller inside instead of this light, open, airy feel to it. Part of that is, is I have this bench seat that's Eh, it kind of works. I mean, I sit in it occasionally, but it's not like a nice loungy kind of a couch. So I would much prefer that rather than having this bench in the bathroom. So if you knocked all that out, you could open it up and put this loungy kind of sofa thing, if you will, in there. Because I have this desk sitting in here where my driver chair, my passenger chair actually swivels around. I do love that. I wouldn't change that at all. Um, that actually is where I typically sit in order to do my work during the day, but it's the only desk situation that I have right now. So if I had opened this up, I would have had some kind of a sliding desk that comes out from underneath the bed frame and then sit on the sofa and sit there and do my work on the computer. Just make it super functional so you have a tinier footprint in there and make use of several things in order to make it light and open and uh, be able to make it functional still. I also would have created a more functional storage space in the back and underneath the bed. The bed is a kind of a Murphy style bed that goes up and down. I always keep it in the down position because it's just too complicated to take up and down. But mostly I just use under the bed, kind of in the, the galley of the bed, the storage space there. Everything else that's in the storage cabinets on the right and the left side, it's very hard to get into, except from the back on the left side. I do put my chairs and a folding table and stuff like that back there. So that's pretty good, except they had all these doors on there that came out in different directions where you couldn't access all of the storage properly. So I just took all the doors off. I would do something different with that space because there's a lot of unused space that's not functional back there. I've seen some really great ideas on YouTube where people have actually built out their space back there where it's nice and open and they've got drawers that can pull out. So it's really amazing. I would much prefer something like that where you can really access everything rather than having to always constantly shuffle everything around back there and not even access some of the areas. I would also add an outdoor shower, maybe something off of the back end. I go to a lot of beach areas and I hate tracking in all of that dirt. I try to grab the faucet from my kitchen sink and drag it out here just to the sliding door and spray down my feet. I end up invariably getting water all inside of the van. So having something outdoors would be really nice. Also, if you have a dog, it would be nice to spray down your dog out there when they get dirty, which happens. So it would be nice to have an outdoor shower. A bigger fridge is a big one for me. It's a really tiny fridge. I've made it work, but I hate the fact that it's on the floor. I would like it to be up a little bit higher and also a little bit bigger. I know there's a way to do it because there's bigger refrigerators and other vans. I'm one of those that likes to cook a lot. So having that fridge space really would be great, especially because I like to boondock in places for long periods of time. So having that extra space would be really nice. And I keep my meals kind of simple because of it. So it'd be nice to cook like a really good meal with lots of different ingredients by having that extra fridge space. And the other one is an oven. I don't have an oven in here. I didn't have an oven in my first RV either, but I really, really, really wish that I did because I, again, love to cook. <laughs> And having an oven is kind of essential in cooking. So I tend to use my Instant Pot a lot, the propane stove, and if I have a grill, I would grill outside and cook too. This is kind of the second part of the question of what would you do differently? And people ask me all the time, would you have sold your house and all of your belongings if you had to do this all over again? Yeah, kind of. I miss having a base home, I'll say that. If I had to do it all over again, what I wish I had done is sold my house and then really looked hard into finding some land and building a base home. 
The idea was is that I would get on the road and I would be traveling around everywhere and I would figure out where I wanted to actually buy land and build a base home because I didn't think that it would be in Washington where I was living at the time. And however, I haven't been able to figure out where that land and base home is going to be. So therefore I just haven't done it. Maybe what I should have done is kept the home, rented it out. My idea too was I wanted to get a tiny home so I didn't think all of the furniture and the stuff that I had would possibly not work well in a tiny home. And therefore, why would I spend all this money on storage and then having to just get rid of it before I go furnish a tiny home? So that was the reason why I got rid of all of my stuff. Of course, hindsight is 2020. Bought my house for $280,000 a year before I started RVing and it's now valued at $600,000 just five and a half years later. So little did we know that this was going to happen. Uh, the housing prices would skyrocket and I could have made a killing on that thing, but just what it is, you take a gamble. At the time, I felt like I was buying my freedom and it was my very first home I had ever owned. And I also was nervous about renting it out because I thought if anybody messes up my very first home, I'm gonna be upset. I know my personality with that. I'm gonna be frustrated. So those are the reasons why I actually sold my home and got rid of all my stuff. So would I have done it differently? I probably would have just rented it out, to be honest, and then maybe sold it now. If you've watched any of the last videos where I came off of the road and took a break from van life for a little while, I went to an Airbnb in Texas for a month, and then I stayed at my sister's house in Dallas for two weeks. So I literally only went to one place in the van and slept in my van for one night between the time I moved from the Airbnb to my sister's house and I really missed being in the van. I really missed traveling and, and being on the road. So I know for sure that I want the best of both worlds. I wanna have a house and I also want to have the van so I can travel when I want and then also have a base home to go to whenever I want as well. I'm sure I'm probably missing some, but those are the big ones. If you have any that you wanna add to that or if you have any comments, go ahead and drop that down in the comment section Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. Keep story chasing and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.